In the bill of materials, it gives you how many pieces, how long they are, and more importantly, the angles. Some of these pieces have 45 degrees on one side, some of them have 45 degrees on both sides, and some are straight on both sides. Each of these pieces are labeled and I have a corresponding number and label over here. And it also tells you how many pieces. Your welding symbols are also very clearly written. And how many times when you see TYP, it means typical. So this GMAW weld is six places typical. Your dimensions are mostly on the front page where it tells you the depth of the seat and the stool itself, the overall height of the stool, and the back of the stool. Be aware that this tube that holds the seat on in the back is not flush to the back or under the seat. It is half on and half off. When we zoom in, you can see that right here. You see that tube is half on, half off. The reason why we do that is so that we have a place to plug weld the seat on in the back and we can also secure it to the back of the stool and to the seat of the stool at the same time. Right here we have what's called a section view again and so we're cutting the stool in half so we can get a clear view of what is going on with the middle of the stool so we can see typically where we're going to weld and also this detail of the back bar being half on and half off with that dimension right there. Again, pay attention to how many pieces, the quantity, the length, and the angle. When you have these angled pieces, 15 inches on this 45 to 45 means that it's 15 inches from point to point all the way across. When we have one that's 45 to flat, it's 33 inches from 45 to flat. All right, so before you start tacking things together, if you wanted to polish your tubing uh, before you tacked it together because you're gonna leave it bare, or you wanna clean every uh, bit of oil off of it, doing it before you tack it together as a stool is going to be easier. Before you start tacking together, if you wanna clean your stool up, now is the time to do it. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do is we've gotta lay out our stool. I actually will lay out the uh, back of the stool, the seat of the stool, and the front of the stool, measuring corner to corner and maintaining square. I don't try and just tack random stuff together. So I'm going to leave my blueprints with the dimensions up facing me. I'm going to grab the back pieces of the stool, a 45 across on both sides, and then we have an internal one, 13 inches. We can always pick up our tape measure. Make sure you find the right pieces. It's not a bad idea to label all these guys. Now I'm going to take uh, the back of this stool has a runner on the bottom. It's five inches up. I've got a bunch of those squares that we use for the uh, cube. Those will work. Clamp right around them just like that. But I also have these really nice fireball tool squares and that's going to maintain squareness. Right? You want to make sure that your metal is still flat on the table as much as possible. Do these two sides first real quick. I'm going to put two tacks, top outside, bottom inside. And that's just to hold things while I take the clamps off and move to the other side. Uh, if you happen to booger up a square, fix it. Uh, we'll move our squares over to the other side. And our tables are relatively flat, so this should keep things on a nice flat plane. I'm lining up my tubing with my mark that I have. I'm gonna tack again two spaces. So we've got our back square. I'm gonna go from that outside corner to the bottom foot and I'm measuring 36 and a quarter. I'm gonna to go to that outside corner and this bottom foot and I'm 36 and an eighth. I verify that I've got everything where it should be. That means that my long side, 36 and 3 sixteenths in order to be truly square. Uh, it only means we're a sixteenth out of square, but you can take the time right now and you can do a little bump. So I'm gonna take the long side in my arms and I'm just gonna tap it down on the table and try and squish it. Let the force of the own metal do the moving and then you just kind of repeat that a little bit till you massage it back in place. 36 and 3 16 is what I'm looking for. That one was a big one, a little bit too much. 
I think I just went to the opposite side now. And you may do that, you may have to tap it back and forth. Know that uh, your tacks can break. And if you do this too hard, your whole stool will fall apart in front of you. Once you get those right where you want them, I'd clamp it right back down to the table again. And I would give two more tacks in each corner. And that should work. Okay, now that the back of the stool is done, notice I didn't put where the seat goes because that piece is like a half on, half off, right? So the front legs, this is gonna be a little bit more tricky to square because there's nothing at the top and bottom. It's like an H. These fireball squares will uh, help us a ton. There's other styles of these that are right angle ones. They work just as well. So again, we're gonna find our dimension. The front runner is 11 inches up from the bottom. Try and clamp this in place with my squares. These spring clamps, they are a lifesaver. Once I get them clamped, I'm going to try and just verify that I've got the same dimensions. And I'll even do a cross to cross right now. Right now I'm pulling up 30 and 7 eighths and 30 and 7 eighths. So we are square that way. So I'm gonna just take the time again and make sure things are nice and flush as well as square. We're gonna tack in two spots. Now, if possible, you wanna tack two opposite corners. The reason is the heat's going to pull this way, but it can all, if you tack just on the top side like I did on this one, the heat can also roll the tube out and so it'll start to put a twist out on it instead of keeping it nice and straight that way. So I like to put a tack on the top and an opposite corner on each side at first. And then again, I will check for square. If you need to move a clamp out of your way just for a moment, since we already measured this once, I should still be at 30 and 7 eighths. Do a quick across here, make sure that I'm at the 15 top and bottom. It looks like it, so now I'm gonna tack bottom corners. At some point, you're gonna have to remove your clamps to get to the other corners that need to be tacked. The H is done. Now you gotta be careful with this one. The seat is another little bit of a challenge because it is just a U. We'll get one fireball square on the outside. We'll get the other fireball square on the inside. Or again, you can use our pieces of angle iron. They will also work just as well. Now we will do our best to measure 19 and a quarter. Yeah, 19, 3 16 so I think we're gonna be good. If this is not right, then it won't meet up with your, your other parts of your stool. So you want to verify again that this is all really nice square. Go ahead and tack two sides. We'll go ahead and remove these squares right now and just make sure that now I can get a good measurement across here right at 15. Comes in a little bit. Good, go ahead and tack the other corners. All right, so now this is the more challenging part, putting these pieces together. I am going to start again with the back piece. There's your seat, again, it's just a U. Real careful not to bump that around. Try and set it down gently. We're gonna get the back of our stool here. The seat height on this is 28 inches. And so that's exactly to the top of where this bar in the middle or on my seat goes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my tape measure and I'm going to measure 28 inches from the bottom on each side up. Now, this is, uh, again, a little tricky because this tubing doesn't sit just flat in there like that. It sits at 28 inches to the top, but offset half and half. For when we put our seat on, half of it's on the seat and half of it's on here. What I'm gonna do, now that I've got it marked out on my seat, I'm going to take this piece of tubing and I'm going to push it halfway on and halfway off of the seat like that. Again, we're gonna make sure it's as square as possible. Throw a square in there real quick. Just check to see if that's tight and about half and half, it looks like it. Two tacks, inside corners. I always wanna reiterate this, we've done it a lot. You never weld anything until your project is fully tacked together. You're gonna to save yourself lots of headache if you actually do that. All right, so here we have our seat. And uh, again, we can use some other squares to clamp down on this. And we can even clamp down on the top because we're gonna be measuring from the bottom here. So we're gonna put one of these little tiny squares in here on both sides. And now I have marks, but I'm gonna double check with my tape measure. It should be 27 inches now because we're measuring underneath. 27 inches, we're gonna do one tack on the outside corner. Then we're gonna double check this side. I'm gonna raise this clamp up just a smidge so I can make sure I get that right at 27. Tack one tack outside corner. Now the next thing you would think, oh, we'll do the front legs. Front legs are a little bit harder right now, 
because there's nothing to support them. We actually wanted to take our grinder and we've got a few tacks on this backside edge. We're going to grind those tacks down and we're going to put these, these are the last two pieces that aren't welded on. They're going to go square right here and then our legs will sit. These tacks in the way are going to move it out um, of frame. Uh, and they're not going to be square, so we got to make sure everything is still flush. All right, so now that we've got those on there, I'm going to stick these again with my fireball squares, uh, or the again, we can use the smaller ones. You can even get a bigger corner like that tacked together. So I'm going to spring clamp that on there, and I'm going to grab this guy, spring clamp the next one on there. You want to be careful on these ones because not only are they going this way, but they're also going that way. So you can just take these little guys and just verify that they're inside. Once you got them lined up, you want to make sure they're even with the one that was already tacked on the back of the back of the stool. You can go ahead and put a tack on there. Now it may not be square still, but we'll bump it into spot when we get everything else lined up. So that looks like it's lined up real good. And again, I will just tack this outside edge and then we can really check for square here in a second. One tack, we'll be able to move it a little bit. Now that I'm looking at this, I want to move my square around to the inside, verify one. I don't want to see a twist. So I'm going to just, it's starting to move that way. Move it back, check for square on this side, check for square on that side. Opposite corners, give it a tack. Now my side runners are on, my back runners on, I've got my seat in place. The next thing you're gonna do, you're gonna take your little spring clamp and you grab these little 90 degree blocks again. Go ahead and just clamp them underneath right here. This will save you lots of time, lots of fighting. Now I'm gonna take my legs and they're gonna sit right up on there. Technically five inches up, again, is where this mark is. All right, now I'm putting my square up here and I've got my legs back here. I noticed that it's not lining up with my mark and I'm a little out of square on both spots. Not much, but I'm gonna trust my measurements here real quick. I'm going to try and force that down to my mark and give it a tack. You might need a second person or a little bit of help. Now we got that side on my right mark going up here to my right mark. Again, just one tack. It may wobble a slight bit. No floor is very level. Um, and the tabletops are fairly flat, but once you find out where it rocks, you got a couple options. Usually what it means, it's tilting this way. So this back leg and this front leg are long. So I can sit here and I could bop that, or I can bop the front leg. Whichever one you wanna do, keep on the same one. Don't go back and forth. And eventually you're just gonna start moving that out and sand it down. Now, if maybe your dimensions are off, you could grind or slightly sliver off one of those legs. That's not ideal because you'll just chase it and your grinder is never flat. You want to try and move those tacks. If you need a grind to tack off to move it, do that. But uh, essentially there's your stool tacked together. All right, so now we're going to show you how we use our sheet metal punch. So this is our piece of sheet metal that we have for the seat. It's a piece of 18 gauge uh, cold rolled. It's already cut out to the right dimensions uh, from the CNC, so it's fairly square but there are, on the edge, you have a bit of dross. And you're gonna to wanna to clean that up with the grinder, knock that, knock that dross off. But you're gonna take your sheet metal and on your stool, when you weld this up, you don't wanna weld this top corner on the front or these top corners in the back until after your seat is on there. And then you can kind of fill up any gaps that are left behind. Otherwise your seat won't fit fully on here because uh, the weld will interfere. On your blueprint on this page, you can see the dimensions for your holes. So we're gonna go ahead and mark those out. All right, once we have our holes located, we're gonna take this sheet metal punch and break. On this side, there is a little punch and then it's already at a set depth. You're gonna bury it as far in as it'll go and you squeeze in and it punches a hole. And there's, you can't go any further. So we just punch it right where we wanna do it, line it up. And you can see that these holes are being placed in there. So now these holes are all punched. We can, what's called a plug weld, we can plug weld through those holes directly on top. So again, we don't want to uh, weld back here yet on either side or on the front corners. We're gonna center our seat first and you're gonna plug weld through each of those holes all the way around to help secure your seat down 
to your chair. So uh, to finish off the stool, we have these black little plastic feet. And they're just going to pound right into the bottom here. And you got to be a little bit ginger with them. And that just helps make it a uh, non-marking. Now, if you're going to put this out in the yard or in the garage, it may not matter. Sometimes there's little burrs inside here from when we cut. You're going to want to take those off before you try putting these in. Okay, and it'll just shave off a little bit of plastic as it makes a nice tight fit. Best to use a rubber mallet. We've got a few of these because it won't uh, completely destroy the uh, plastic feet. If you use a metal hammer, it may not work out so well. And now our stool is about ready. So I would do that very last. We're not going to finish welding this in the video right now. That's for you to do in class. But you have all the tools you need to read the blueprints, figure out the welding symbols, and weld this up. But again, I wouldn't weld the top until your seat is fully on, ready to go. And then you can weld these little corners that are left out after you plug weld around here. And then I would put the feet in on the bottom very last after you weld it. The last tip I have for you is to never weld in a consistent line all the way around here. If you change a tire on a car, you use a what's called a star pattern, where you put a little bit of pressure and then you go to the exact opposite side and put a little bit of pressure and you do that all the way around the tire. Same thing with our metal projects because the heat will warp them. We want to put a little bit of heat here, a little bit of heat down there, over here, over there, and you kind of bounce around this whole stool welding it up. Uh, that way none of it gets all heated up too much in one spot. So we're going to go ahead, tack this on, get your seat pan on, weld this whole thing up, moving your heat around, then put your feet in and your stool is done. Okay, good luck. I know you can do it.